Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Eric, also known as Ready Hustle, and also known as Mr. Fajita. So, comment whichever one you like. Um, as you can see, we have Doja Dog. So you'll be joining us in this video today. I'm working on a bunch of DTF transfers, so if you want to see some DTF, this is the place to be tonight. And, um, I got some behind me right here, so we've already printed out a bunch. And we'll be printing out a bunch more. And um, I also want to thank everyone for joining us on our live. Um, it was really fun. I was about live for two hours. Nita Fita was there. Uh, the market didn't go so great. But we were able to network with other people. Other businesses that um, possibly might need embroidery work in the future. So there's that. And also um, talk to a few people about making transfers for us. So, you know, might not have made a lot of money. But... It left a lot of um, openings for the future. You guys see that? Ooh, another dog. Hopefully they don't mess with each other. They don't start fighting on my video. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead. Um, we'll get into the transfers and you can see what I'm working on real quick. I'll show you what I got here. All right, well, we're not even halfway through. And filling up this kitchen island here, so. We'll keep them going. All right, so I've gotten these printed out. As you can see, I had some print head rubbing issues. And I was like struggling. Why was that happening? I couldn't figure it out. I haven't had the, I've had that issue before, but my exit tray fixed it. And as you can see on this one, no rubbing. So <laughs> I didn't notice, but my exit tray moved a little bit and that's what caused the issues. So this is actually a uh, custom order I got off Etsy. Um, it's about 10 transfers, maybe a little more. And um, yeah, so real quick, uh, the way to fix this issue is your exit tray isn't um, going straight out of the printer. It was going down a little bit or up a little bit. So it will cause the film to buckle and that's how you got the rubbing. So. Let's go over to the printer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Another custom order that we had on our website. Uh, what I like about it is you can really see how vibrant these colors could get. So yeah, um, custom orders. You can email us at needandthread at gmail.com or you can go to our website and buy them there. Needandthread.com all right, so I'm waiting for a, a print to come out right now. Um, making sure I'm not sitting on any prints. I'm not. But um, I had a few people during the live ask me if they thought, um, if I thought it was worth getting a DTF printer. And for me, absolutely. I think absolutely it was worth it. Like, it opened up so many t-shirt opportunities for us. You know, poly or sublimation is cool but having to worry about polyester or getting a spray or something to put on a shirt is just not what we wanted to do we want this to be you know kind of like an exact process we don't be messing around too much we've, we've short changed some a few things before and uh, it's just you end up wasting a lot of time and we didn't want to do that so um would i recommend getting a dtf printer yes absolutely uh, just know that it's not always easy it's not fun it can be toxic to your health. The uh, powder, when you're curing it, make sure you have really good ventilation, a fan sucking it out, or do it in the open air, and maybe even still wear a mask just because, I mean, it smells like cancer. Like, <laughs> I don't want cancer. I really don't. But um, keep it open air. I think you'll be all right. Um, try not to breathe that stuff in. Don't do it indoors. Don't do it. Stinks. Um, I heard people who have done it and they don't feel good after doing it. It's like melted plastic, so don't do it. Um, let's see, what would I recommend? Um, if you want to save as much money as you can when you get started, get a Epson Sure Color printer and convert your own. There's tons of resources online on how to do it. Uh, Facebook groups, a um, bunch of different options. So it's kind of whatever you're feeling more comfortable with. Any other commercial printers or you know DTF printers they're technically they're still conversions they're going off base models they're just 
you know, giving you all the bells and whistles. And they're not always that great either. A lot of people have issues with them. So it's like, you can do it. Um, just know you're going to spend about three times, at least three times as much. So you're looking at 3K to get started compared to 800 to 1,000 bucks is about what it took to get me started. Um, I, mean, I have a couple, another printer that I got used that I, I can flip. And I have been waiting to flip it. But the only reason I haven't done the conversion is because... Uh, once you convert it, you got to keep that ink running through it or you'll clog the head because the ink is like a, a, a rubberizes kind of. So I don't want to waste ink if I don't have a lot of prints. Um, the single printer is enough for me to get all my shirts and uh, transfers done. It takes a little bit longer. So the second printer would speed things up. And that's why I got it to speed things up. But I just haven't had the need to convert it yet. So if you guys are waiting for that conversion video, I'm sorry. It's going to come eventually. Um, or not, I don't know. We're gonna be stepping into some DTG game, so I think a direct to garment is still the probably the best method for printing on shirts, minus screen printing. Screen printing is great too. But if you're looking at digital printing, direct to garment is probably the best method still. Um, DTF has advantages over direct to garment, like DTF will last longer. Direct to garment seems to wash out, especially if you don't do it right. Um, I've heard direct to garment cracks and uh, fades away quicker um, in my experience I haven't had any fading at all with any of my prints um, I haven't had really any issues at all and I wash them really hardcore you know I don't do any of the recommended steps so there's that at least but when it comes to a, a pure quality director garment is the best so you know, go with what you want but you also got to pay 20k to get into basically 20k is the entry point into director garment so that's quite a quite an expense to take on, especially if you're new and just getting started. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, if you have any uh, questions about any director garment, DTF transfers, whatever, please leave them down below. I'd love to answer them. Yeah. Uh, maybe in a video, or I'll probably just answer them down in the comments. So there's that. Now let's go ahead and get back to these prints. So as you guys can see, I stripped my printer. It is now naked <laughs> uh, what happened is i uh, was installing an ink cartridge and the chip fell off right into this metal area and i had to take everything off just to get that one chip out and i wasted probably three hours and didn't get any prints done and it set me back a day so i apologize to anyone who ordered that day but uh what i want oh excuse the ink i overfilled my uh waste container whoops so this is my little jerry-rigged uh, exit tray. It could be a lot better, but this has been getting the job done. Um, I just kind of had it pulled out a little bit further, so it lowered it probably like a quarter inch, and that was enough to cause rubbing. So I got it all the way in there. Excuse the lighting. But as you can see, it now bump, bumps up to the, the rollers in there. So the film will come out nice and straight, and um, that will prevent the rubbing and I also got rid of all the uh, wheels the front uh, rollers that normally would be there to help uh, keep the film aligned uh, just because with this kind of printing the ink will be wet and it will uh, it'll rub all the ink off so excuse the lighting in here it's not the best but hopefully you guys can see a little something <sighs> all right guys so we've been at it for about four hours now it's midnight um, at least about two more hours of work, probably two more hours of printing, and I also still have to cure all that, so, yeah. And I work early tomorrow, so that, that'll be fun, but hey, you know, we'll get our three hours of sleep, and we'll power through tomorrow, and we'll do it again tomorrow, so let's do it. Keep going. Here's uh, one of the prints I just did. It's for a dealership, or a car club, I'm not even sure, but custom excuse me, it's a custom order. And um, one issue I was actually having, I'll show you on the other um, film I have, I had to do two prints. Um, this white here wasn't showing up, like it was a lower DPI, and my RIP software had a, had a little bit of an issue picking it up. So what I did in Photoshop was just copy and paste the image, 
and I overlapped it a few times and that would kind of filled it in. So that was how I fixed that issue. Um, if you're going to do DTFs, you might want to get pretty good at Photoshop. One big recommendation. You don't need to be a pro. You just need to know a few basic steps. All right, real quick, I just wanted to show you how that print came out kind of funky. So look, it only printed out like little spots of white in the flag. Um, it, you know, it wouldn't be that bad if you're putting it on a white shirt. But this is actually going to go on a red shirt, you told me, so... I'm still going to send it out to him. He could play around with it, put it on a white shirt, and then use the other one for what he needs it to be used for. So, yep, just want to show you guys that. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print this out for you. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but what I did with this image is I half-toned it. And what half-tone is, is it's basically little dots in the image so it doesn't print out in a solid sheet. Because um, if any of you guys do vinyl, you kind of know if you had a solid sheet, it kind of feels just like, you know, it, it gets hot during the summer, makes you sweat a little bit. There's not really good airflow. You do it this way, and um, the shirt will feel super soft. It won't feel like a vinyl finish. It'll be pretty close to director garment. Not as good as director garment, but, you know, the best you could get for this price. So let's go ahead and send it to the printer and see how it turns out. So in the settings here, you want to print color first. And then color plus white. And we're going to run all the nozzles. And we're going to run it at a 1440 DPI. And we only need one copy. So let's go ahead and print it. Sorry guys for the shakiness. Now with uh, my version of Acarip, it's 9. It's uh, kind of slow to get it to the printer. But then again, that looked kind of fast. So we'll see how long it takes. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of film in the printer. And we'll come back to that. So I use uh, some white paper in the back. Uh, the last film I was using didn't need it. For whatever reason, this film, it needs some paper in the back. Like I said, you got to be, you know, uh, <laughs> you got to be a problem solver, I guess. You know, a few tricks. All right, now should... All right, guys, so it took about a minute to send it to the printer. Not too bad. All right, let's come back when it's out. Okay, guys, it's coming out right now. Just finished up. So another thing I did with this image, I deleted the black from it. It's going to go on a black shirt, so there's no point to print the black. That will also give you a much better feel in the shirt. Uh, take a look at the back. You'll get a real good idea of what I'm talking about. See, if I didn't half tone it, this whole back would have been solid. And it honestly would have felt pretty bad. It's another trick. Um, you can't really print smoke with a DTF because of the gradients. But if you half tone it, you can do it. So that's one way to do it. Uh, customers who send me that type of image, I recommend the half tone. Hopefully they like it as much as I do. All right, so here it is in my fancy powdering box. I powder each sheet by hand. And um, I usually let it dry for a couple of minutes before I powder. I don't want to powder it while it's too wet. Okay, guys, so I don't know if it's possible for me to powder it with one hand. Hmm, you know, not bad. I'm going to go ahead and see if I could do the rest. Okay.
Okay, I like to do one coat and then go back that way. And then a couple happy taps. Maybe one day I'll get an automatic shaker. Probably not, but who knows. Alright, there you go. Now it's ready for the curing process. Guys, you, everything's been going good tonight. I hit print. I walked away thinking things would go good as usual. And this is the mess I get. The print head rubbed pretty gnarly on this. So now I'm wet capping it and we'll let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and then I'm run a head clean and try it again. Hopefully my parent head is cool because if that goes down, then we go down. <laughs> uh, at least I got a backup printer to convert if I need to. And that's if that runs fine too because I never, you know, we still got to run make sure the head's good on that one since we haven't been running it. Oh, the joys, the joys. At least, um... I train on that Brother GTX next week, so that should be up and running soon. So, at least there's that if anything goes wrong. But, man, I've been producing so many transfers, it would suck right now to not be able to do that for you guys. Hopefully, all goes well. Uh, we'll check back soon. Alright, guys, so I just spent the last three hours fixing my printer. One of those nights. Oh. I thought it was done for. I thought I had a. I was like, well, at least I got the backup printer. I could spend all day tomorrow converting it and be a day late on all my orders. But uh, as you can see, I got it printing again. But um, I might have still messed up the head. So we'll see how long this printer's gonna stay in the in action. I'm going to wet cap it overnight. I won't be able to finish all my orders, obviously, because I screwed myself. But um, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I've been at it since 8. It's almost 3. I gotta wake up in about 3 and a half hours, so. <laughs> and I'm not going to bed right now, so. I'm gonna keep sending out a couple more prints. <sighs> it's just one of those nights, guys. As Liz would say, sleep don't make money. Oh, <laughs> oh on top of that. I misquoted an invoice, so I'm basically sending out an extra five transfers on the house. I'm on honor, obviously. I'm not going to be like, hey, I misquoted you. You need to pay me more. But <sighs> it's frustrating. Unfortunately, also, well, now, like I said, I won't be able to get her prints out to her tomorrow. So she's going to have to wait another day. But hey, she's getting a really good deal. So at least there's that. I'll uh, update you guys again.